pencilled. It's uh, kind of deaf ish Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. It's very pretty. It's it's in the other end of like this the metal spectrum. Yeah. It's just, it shows the diversity of the album. And you know what I was just thinking? Like the whole first part of that song is you doing clean vocals, basically. Yes. And that's like felt so out of my comfort zone. Usually it's like screaming, screaming, and then a bit of like clean vocals, and it's like mainly clean vocals. Um, but it's just it's new. I, I remember so I remember when we started doing takes for like the recording of Blood and Salt, and we had like the vocal lines. We had a rough idea of what you wanted to do with it, mm -hmm. and then once we went into like the recording session, um, I remember being you know like holy oh, shit that was. You did a couple of like one takers in there that were pretty amazing. <laughs> and this, yeah. That was a, it's like your range. It's, it's in the middle of my range, but um, Blood and Soul is actually also a, quite a personal song. It's about like just losing yourself underneath all the pressure from from everyone around you, like your social life, your working life. You like grow up to become an adult, and everybody expects so much from you, and you get just thrown into this adult world and have to take care of yourself and you have to yeah. live up to like a certain, yeah, expectation. certain expectation from friends family or co-workers bosses and just sometimes just feel smudge maybe it's like this like yeah becoming an adult problem yeah <laughs> just uh bills, why, why can't it stuff. be easy yeah why can't it be easy <laughs> yeah yeah uh, corner office maniacs was the last track that we that we did it was like uh, we wanted to like sort of break up the album because we had like a bunch of songs, but we tend to like you know when a record sometimes does something different, maybe sort of different sound texture in order to keep the flow going. So it's not just like heavy track, heavy track, heavy track, mm -hmm. sort of to keep it diverse. So we wanted something like that, and I think all of us grew up listening to like. Slipknot Iowa mm -hmm. and what I really loved about those records they always had like this very sort of dark intro for for each record mm -hmm. and we're like we need to do something like that and then finally um, I set out to make something uh, with it was a video from I think it was Jim Cramer mm -hmm. which is like uh, this financial analyst which has his own TV show and there was this video of him back in uh, 2008 I think just before the credit crisis, and he had this meltdown, just complete meltdown on live television, just like saying like, oh, these banks, they have no idea what the fuck is going on, just like going off. And I remember seeing that and, was, and I was just like, holy crap, what, what, what is happening? I, I think literally a month later, the whole like economy went, you know, mm. on its ass. And I was like, I need to use that sometimes in a song or I don't know, anywhere. Mm -hmm. So eventually I, I sort of took that and then manipulate it through all sorts of like guitar pedals and crazy stuff. And so if you listen closely, it's in there, but it's sort of blended with all the other different sounds. But so if you listen closely, there's a speech of Jim Cramer in that entire song. <laughs> the future need us not. It's really like uh, <laughs> hyper intelligent. <laughs> Take. The, the, the computers are going to take a, a go over the world. It's the Matrix. They're going to destroy us. This is a Matrix you are thinking <laughs> will happen in the end. That, that I'm obsessed about. Yeah. yeah. Like we're like now organizing our own defeat. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We totally are. I, 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 uh, I told this earlier that I learned, uh, I think a couple of months back, um, there's this computer, I think somewhere in the Midwest of the United States. It's called Aladdin. You need to look this up, this is, this is crazy. Uh, it's like a computer and it does risk assessment for bank investments. And basically what it does is it sort of checks, all right, uh, historical events and then what happened after those events and then compares it to what's happening now. And based on that, it like diverts your investment. So it's like one single computer and it's managing, I think, uh, like 14 trillion dollars at the moment, which is like 7% of the world economy. So it's like the decisions that this computer is making are more important than what the president of the United States is saying, basically. Mm -hmm. That's how much money one single computer is making. Yeah. To me, it's like, if you would have if you would've told this to people 50 years ago, they probably would have said like, are you, are you out of what your mind? In the next 50 years. Yeah. yeah. 
It's just, I'm very curious to see what that's going to turn out like. But this song is basically like a dystopian picture of... Yeah, computers taking over the world. When it goes south, it's going to go south hard. Yeah. <laughs> Silent War, you can interpret that song like two ways. Either like, for like a, a veteran, how do you call it? Ve v veteran. Veteran. Like veteran who has always had this war in his head ever since he left the war. But also it's a song about looking back onto your life and feeling that you haven't really lived. Yeah. That you've just, yeah. That you feel like you're sort of trapped in... Trapped in... in your daily routine and like the ways of life and that you yeah. haven't done anything you really wanted. Yeah, that you're, you know, that everything is supposed to turn out a certain way, but yeah. you're just not see seeing the benefits. Yeah. I think I think you can interpret it in, very, in, in a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. Like it can be a really personal song or it can be a song about, you know, a person with like a certain trauma mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah. I think what's also, in, it's... Uh, Music musically, it's, it's our uh, first power ballad. It's, it's ballad like ballad ever. It's like a ballad. It's a ballad. It's a it's fucking a, ballad. It's clean vocals. Yeah. I I always wanted to do a ballad. It's a, that's like the the hardest thing to do because it's I guess it's really easy to make a bad ballad and mm -hmm. to make a good one is difficult. Yeah, it we, is. We tried loads of stuff for this song and like most of it was just like instantly cringeworthy and yeah. terrible. <laughs> kind of like Nickelback meets <laughs> something else. Some, I don't know. Yeah. Like They're, rock. 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 Rock ballad. Rock ballad. Yeah. But I, I think I think after a while because it's sort of really, we really had to do songwriting with like a piano or an acoustic guitar mm -hmm. and work from there. And that was like you know, there's going out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. and there's this. This is like mm -hmm. the comfort zone is like miles away. Yeah. I remember for you, like recording the vocals. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Well, no, it's something different, and I think I, it it learned me progress as a singer, and just like note every note, every pronunciation, every every subtle little thingy becomes so important because it's a stripped down song, and it's not with distorted guitars and, and stuff so yeah it's it's a learning progress process yeah. but it's good yeah but it's yeah. that that's exactly what it is yeah. like your voice is like especially in the verses there's mm -hmm. like no heavy guitar to counter it it's just you yeah Which and i I, so I remember we we worked you that was <laughs> that was like a, a that was a difficult one yeah, it was really difficult like a million different takes yeah a million and lots of pitch correction no <laughs> It was auto tune, auto tune, everything. It wasn't even me singing. It's just a stand-in vocalist. Yeah, it was like T-Pain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> T-Pain. <laughs>